listening to the Life Fire Radio Show with Pastor Bethel, brought to you by New Life Church FC. You may listen to the Life Fire Radio Show on your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. Tune in Monday through Friday to the best interviews, testimonies, and teachings of the Word by Pastor Bethel. Subale! Hey, we're going to continue here this afternoon. Welcome to the Live Fire Radio Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a great day. It's Friday. Hey, listen, great things are coming up tonight. Listen, you do not want to miss tonight here at New Life Church, 790 Windbell Circle. Here tonight at 7 o'clock, you do not want to miss. Something has to break. Let me tell you something. These guys have been working uh, late nights. They've been working during the week. The sound, the the, the video, the the drama, the I, I I mean, they've been working overtime to prepare this drama so that we, as leaders, number one, as leaders, and also as members of New Life Church, let's bring somebody here tonight. Let's bring somebody here tonight. Let them sit through this drama, be able to experience, number one, the Holy Spirit-led drama. You know, I don't have the details, but uh, if if Chris, if you can call me, if you're watching, or somebody that knows the details of where, or what prison, this is crazy. There is a prison that heard about this drama because of one of the inmates and this play or this drama is going to go directly into that prison tonight. So not only are you going to be able to watch on Facebook live and YouTube live. And for those of you that I'm bringing three people, I mean, I contacted three people. I was, I, I was, I was challenging them to come and join me to it. So three people that don't necessarily come to new life church, I'm bringing, I'm bringing tonight. It's very important that you bring somebody, but there's a unit, a prison unit that they're, they are going to be watching this live. Can you believe that? That is amazing. In other words, they allowed them to watch it. Somebody, I guess the warden, or I don't know, somebody, but they're going to be able to watch it. So very important that tonight something's got to break. Come and join us tonight at New Life Church. It's going to be an amazing drama. Hey, listen, bring somebody. Bring somebody that needs Jesus. Bring them. It is up to you. Bring them. It's going to be a great time. They're going to, they're, they're going to experience something, an encounter with the living God. Amen. And let it be a transformation, the beginning of a transformation to their lives. Today, I want to talk. We're going to continue about godly decisions. I'm... I'm we're closing it out tonight, uh, today, the coming, the decision-making, any time that we're making any type of decisions. We're talking about, number one, consider all the facts, put everything in the middle. Hey, decide your pros, your cons, and verify it with scripture. We talked about that. Um, use the God-given gifts that God has given you to make these decisions, obviously, to fulfill your purpose. And also, uh, wise counsel. And tonight, I want to talk about the circumstances in your life do not necessarily mean that that is why you make a decision. Uh, first of all, let's go. Uh, let's go here and find out what a circumstance is. A circumstance is a fact. A circumstance is a condition that is connected or relevant to an action. In other words, we're about to make a decision. In whatever decision we're going to make, very important that in every decision, there's, there's, there's circumstances. There's circumstances that surround you. There are outside circumstances. There are inward circumstances. And these circumstances is a condition 
that is connected with or it's relevant to an event or an action. Uh, another definition of circumstance is once state a financial affair or welfare. Amen. Um, so there's going to be circumstances concerning how you make decisions. And we must take steps. We know that that the Lord, the Bible says that our steps are ordered by the Lord. That our path are arranged by him. Nevertheless, there are circumstances. There are circumstances in our lives. Amen. You're listening to the Live Fire radio show. Nonetheless, there are circumstances in our lives. In this decision-making process, there are circumstances. And these circumstances are only meant to function as a tool. Listen to me very carefully. Example, I'm about to choose uh, a position in whatever, either, 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 uh ministerial or you know in your job whatever you, you're about to make a decision of well, what career decision you're going to make or, or job or whatever and even around those decisions there's going to be circumstances and those circumstances believe it or not they function as a tool of confirmation for the decision that we are about to take but they should never control our decision. In other words, circumstances, write this down. Circumstances should never control our decision. Because in every decision-making process that we've been talking about this week, there's going to be circumstances, but they should not solely control why you made that decision. Well, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Book of Psalms. Uh, you've been you're listening to the Live Fire Radio Show. Let's go to the Book of Psalms here this morning, talking about uh, this afternoon, talking about a circumstance, the fact, the condition connected with, the relevant or to an event that is a circumstance. But look at what the Bible says in Psalms 31, verse 15: "My times are in Thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies, and from that that." persecutes me in other words there, there's conditions in our, my times that are in thy hand deliver me lord from these circumstances uh psalms 37 18 the lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever there's going to be there's going to be circumstances. These are tools. These are tools. Their circumstances are strengthening our faith, strengthening uh, our our faith we have in His grace, knowing that the Lord knows the days of the upright, and also our inheritance shall be forever. In other words, there's some circumstances that may not be positive. But we know that our inheritance is forever. That's more positive than any than, than anything that we can experience here on earth. Isaiah 48, 17. The, uh, I'm sorry. Man, I got the wrong one. Uh, Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 48, 48. 4818. Wait a minute. What did I do here? Almost a bit. I think I did something. I pressed something. I can know. Okay. Let me see. Let me go back. Let's go back to, to here and then I'll go fix it in my computer. But many times, church, we are so preoccupied with the outside circumstances of our situation that we get so blindsided by the circumstances instead of focusing 
right? Instead of focusing on number one, we already calculated. We sat down. We count the cost. In other words, yes, the cost is going to be, it's a heavy cost. But, but, uh, but the finishing product, man, it's, it's going to, we're going to be literally fulfilling the will of God and fulfilling our purpose. Amen. Um, we've already confirmed it with the word of God. Number three, I'll be walking in my purpose because th this is my gift. This, in other words, yes, it's difficult, but it's so plain and simple that this is the decision that I ought to be making. And then uh, number four, uh, you ran it across also wise men and women that you surround yourself with. And the confirmation is that, yes, this is the best decision that you can make for this season. And yes, there are circumstances that, that surround us, obviously circumstances that surround us. Um, let, let me let me try one more time. See see if I can get to to this verse here of Isaiah 48, 15. And no, I don't have it. There it is, Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches you thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that you should go. Amen. This is this is this is a great verse, letting us know that we've already done all these things that have led us now to be confident in this decision that we're about to make. And yes, even though the circumstances may not seem conducive, in other words, how I wish these circumstances would change and it would make my decision a lot easier, right? Well, their circumstances are just exactly what we need because even though we're making a godly decision, those circumstances are strengthening us. So that we, in, in other words, you remember in the Bible where it talked about that the Lord did not remove the Hittites, Hittites, all the ites. In other words, but he, they left, God left them there so that Israel would learn how to fight. In other words, there was going to be tough circumstances, even though they were, they were in the, in the wilderness, but there were some stuff, tough circumstances. That didn't mean they didn't belong in the wilderness. Now, they were they, they were supposed to be in the wilderness for a while. Their destination was the promised land. And the circumstances were not very gentle. And they're, they're, they were not very um, kind. But, it, but they were there for a purpose. And that was to mature them and mature their faith in, in God. Uh, let's see what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 49. Let's see if I have it here. Isaiah 49. I almost have it. Isaiah 49, verse 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand, and thy walls are continually before me. The Lord, in every circumstance that we're in, Know this, that, that everything that is allowed is allowed by God. Even, even, the, even the things that seem difficult and we in our flesh say, oh, that must not be from God. Well, perhaps that is of God. And it's maturing you and it, it is strengthening you in an area. Um, they, you know, I've always said that, that we must learn how to sit across the table with a Judas. And I don't know if you've ever sat across the table from a Judas, and I'm pretty sure you have. And a Judas 
is 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 a is a good person to have around your circle. I mean, obviously, we we don't want a Judas in our circle, but nine times more more times than none, there's going to be a Judas near you. And and what you and, and what a Judas brings to the table is that it teaches you to love the unlovable. I mean, those are the ones that are always bringing some type of headache. But it teaches you to love the unlovable. And so at the end of the day, you know, God is in in total total control. Now, even though like I said, we should circumstances should never control why we make certain decisions. And we should not blindly, right? Depending on the circle. In other words, oh, these are easy circumstances. In other words, if I choose to do this, gravy train. Well, that might not necessarily, just because it's going to be gravy train doesn't necessarily mean that it, that you're making a wise, godly decision. Vice versa. Tough circumstances. Very difficult. Oh, man, this is going to be so difficult for me to accomplish. This must not be of God. Well, not necessarily. In other words, there, there, there's a purpose why things are difficult to get through. And it's because God is working on some things in you that he needs to bring out. Either to get rid of or to bring out the boldness, the faith. You know, whatever it is he needs to bring out here, he'll use outside circumstances to bring him out in order for you to feel, fulfill his purpose. So we should not never, ever blindly be governed by our circumstances because there may be times in life when both doors of opportunity, right? You have a door and opportunity. In other, in other words, a door opens. Oh, my God, I, I got to go in. But then there's also doors of opposition. But you know what? They're both. God uses both. This is what I was talking about in, in the book of Isaiah 49, 16. Let's go, to, let's go real quick to the book of Isaiah 49, 16. Let me see if I have it right. 49, 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand. Thy walls are continually before me. God is in control. God is in total, total, total control. And, and even though, like I said, the, 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 he, you're in the palm of his hands. And even though sometimes there, there's some there's some um, there's some circumstances that that seem like an opportunity and, and some may seem like an opposition. Well, just know that God is in total control and he's he's the God of, of both the opportunity and the opposition. Well, man, that just made the decision process a little bit more difficult. Well, this is why it's so important that we as Christians, right, that we walk with God and we're continually in the things of God. Because when you're when you are continually in the things of God, decisions like that will be made very easy. You know, this morning I was talking to 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 some people here in my office. And I was letting them know that, you know, in, in times that we're living in, every decision that we're making, I mean, pastors, we're making decisions every day. Uh, business owners, you're making decisions every day. Uh, government leaders, you're making decisions every day. Uh, any type of a leader, you're making decisions every day. Parents, you're making decisions every day. Your students are making decisions every day. I mean, everybody right now, we are making decisions daily by the moment. In other words, decisions are being made momentar momentarily because you make one decision now and then the law changes and then tomorrow you're making a another decision. But right now it is, it is very critical that as leaders, especially spiritual leaders or pastors or leaders that are leading the flock, that our decision making has to be on point. And yes, there's going to be outside interference. There's going to be outside circumstances that perhaps, well, this, this, we shouldn't do this because there's opposition. Well, just because there's opposition in their circumstances doesn't mean that that's not a godly decision. So yes, right now, a lot of fasting, a lot of praying, um, surrounding yourself with wise counsel, always gathering the facts, listening before speaking, 
reading the word of God, confirming it with the word of God? Uh, is it fulfilling your purpose with the gifts that God has given you? Are you fulfilling your purpose in this generation? Are you fulfilling your purpose in doing the will of God? You know, all these things, is it, you know, all these, even though, in the, you know, in the outside circumstances, for instance, right now, uh, there's outside circumstances outside the church, right? I mean, there's sickness, there's this and the other. So, hey, you got sick. You're a man of God. You're a holy man of God, but you got sick. Now what? Does that mean that you're not living holy? No, it just means you got sick. You know, this is why it's very, very we must be very careful with the word of God. We must be very careful in how we preach this word of God and must be preached in context. All the time must be preached in context. Because even, even as we're making these decisions daily, guess what? There's going to be some decision making that there's going to be opportunity. There's going to be opposition. And just because there's opposition or, or, or an opportunity, there's going to be an opposition. Therefore, we must interpret every door every open door, or we should not interpret every open door as an opportunity from God. And we should not interpret every closed door as a sign of his opposition. That would be completely foolish because everything has to confirm with the word of God. Everything has to confirm with all the facts. Everything God confirmed with confirmation you have from wise counsel. Everything God confirmed with, is it is this my purpose? Is, am I living out my purpose? Or am I making decisions to confirm with other purposes? And let's go to the word of God. Let, let's, let's go to, uh, let me see if I, if I have this. Um, I should have it. I should have it here. I'm sorry. I'm going to get that. No, I said no. I'm going to get that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 through 9. 1 Corinthians. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to my Bible here uh, because this is in the King James. And, and I want you to really understand what I'm about to say here. <clears throat> Talking about circumstances and how there are circumstances in every decision that we make. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 8 and 9. Look at what the Bible says in verse 8 through 9. But I will tarry, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Right? For a great and effective door has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. That's what the Bible says. There's many adversaries. Now, Paul was hoping. For an open door, let that op let that door be open so that so that I may be able to go preach the gospel. But knowing that there's going to be opposition, those were the circumstances of this decision that he had to make. His decision was the godly decision that Paul had to make is yes, here's an open door. Thank you, Lord, because this open door provides for me for me to fulfill my purpose and do your will, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there's going to be adversary. That means those were the circumstances. And if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he does the work of the Lord as I also do. Now, because there's an adversary, because you're preaching the truth, does that mean, well, that must not mean that I'm doing the will of God. No, that just means that there's an adversary. That, that means that that's who's the adversary, the enemy. That means those are the circumstances. These are the circumstances that come when we make these decisions that we are going to stand up straight for the truth and for the knowledge, for the relationship that we have in Christ Jesus that bringeth understanding, and that is the gospel. There's going to be opposition. And now more than ever, church, there's going to be more there's going to be a more opposition now in everything we do. Why? Because we are preaching the word of God. And when you are preaching the word of God, there's going to be adversary. They're going to come against you and me, and, and this is nothing. Hold on. Hold on, church. Second Corinthians. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Uh, almost, I have this one. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 12 through 15. 
Furthermore, when I come to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit. Church. Well, you know, we're gonna go preach the gospel. We're gonna go do. We're gonna go do an outreach. But things are getting a little bit difficult. You know, I'm not. I don't have that peace in my spirit. Well, Paul didn't either. He didn't have rest in the in the spirit. But the door was open. The door that opened let Paul know. That he his opportunity to fulfill his purpose of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles was his sign for him to go, knowing that he still didn't have no rest in his spirit because I did not find Titus my brother. In other words, he was able to discern that this unrest that he had wasn't because he was about to make a bad godly decision or not a bad godly decision, but a bad decision. But it was more, more that he didn't have no rest because he could not find Titus, his brother. But taking my leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. But he still, even though taking his brother would have been easier, Taking Titus with him would have been easier. Sometimes there's there's times where, man, I, I wish that our our leadership would, would be more on board. Maybe I wish my brothers would be more on board. I wish the church was more on board. But regardless of the circumstance, I wish the circumstances would change. I really wish more people would participate in this vision and this calling that we have to move forward and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This revival that we're looking for. I wish the circumstances would change. I wish we had more finances. I wish we had more involvement. But those circumstances should not stop you like it never it didn't stop Paul from moving forward and preaching the gospel. That's a good word. Because, because a lot of times, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these are the things that we're teaching here about godly decisions. Why, why am, I te- am I teaching this? Because in this near future, your every decision that you make from here on out, it better be a godly decision. I'm telling you, it better be a godly decision. Man, I, I almost got to go. I got to go pick up my wife. So. In taking decisions based on our circumstances, we should check what is the wisest thing to do. Real simple. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I, I think I think that makes sense. In every decision that we make, some circumstances are going to get more difficult. We as Christians here in these days that we're living in, whether you take the shot, whether you take the vaccine, whether you put on a mask, whether you don't put on a mask, these are decisions <clears throat> that we are going to continue to be making as Christians. And these decisions are not going to be so black and white. There's going to be the gray area has now expanded church. And as leaders, as pastors, as evangelists, prophets, whatever, 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 whatever ministry you operate in, Every decision that you make must be a godly decision, a well-planned out, thought out, prayed out, fasted out decision because people are following us. And if you're making blindly decisions, then you have just gone into a club called The Blind that will be leading the blind and all of them will fall into a ditch. We're moving into a, situ- a, a time where, where circumstances are going to be more difficult. Circumstances around your decision making will definitely mo- be more difficult. But that doesn't mean that you don't stand firm in our God. In the God that has already affirmed us to stand firm in these times. Stand firm. 
make these godly decisions. And even though our circumstances are going to start to get more difficult, do not bend backwards. Do not compromise. I'll say this. Just because I, I, to, I told this to the church the other day and, and, and I posted it on Facebook. Just because I don't compromise to your way doesn't mean that I'm not compassionate. Because a lot of people will say, man, Pastor Beto, he's not compassionate. Well, just because I don't confirm, I, I don't compromise to your ways, that doesn't mean I'm not com I'm not compassionate. I'm compassion. Trust me. I'm compassionate. Come and sit in my office. Come and hang out with me. Come and talk to me. Come and listen to my heart. I am very compassionate. I'm just not going to compromise to your ways. I would rather stand firm in the things of God and 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 let things play out, you know, and, and hopefully you will see the fruit of the ministry. You will see the fruit of my life. And then you will, you will decide a little bit differently. Like, you know what? He is a compassionate man. He is a loving man. He is a loving pastor. Yes, I am. Here in the near future, listen to me very carefully. You're going to start to make some very difficult decisions. Because the circumstances surrounding your decision making are going to get more difficult. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you're not making the godly decisions. Start making godly decisions. Look back into our podcast. Go back into all our podcasts. Go back and listen to all the five points that I made about making godly decisions. Number one, gather all the facts. Number two, confirm it with the word of God. Number three, make sure it fulfills your purpose according to the gifts that God has given you. Number two, number four, surround yourself with wise counsel. And number five, never make decisions. Never solely base your decisions on the circumstances surrounding you. God bless you. You've been listening to the Live Fire Radio Show here this afternoon with Pastor Beto. Hey, join us tonight, here tonight, uh, here tonight at New Life. Uh, we're going to have something must break. Here tonight, I'm going to leave you with one of our sponsors. I ask saludo para todos los hermanos Davalos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. You've been listening to the Live Fire Radio Show, number one show here in the DFW. Suele. Davalos Masonry, where no job is too big and no job is too small. We do it all. Brick and stone work, new construction, repair and patchwork, sidewall pavers, retaining walls, and mailboxes. You can contact Chris Davalos at 972-948-6577 or Joe Davalos at 469-324-8913. Call today and get your quote. They're waiting on you. Fire Radio Show with Pastor Bethel, brought to you by New Life Church FC. You may listen to the Live Fire Radio Show on your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. Tune in Monday through Friday to the best interviews, testimonies, and teachings of the Word by Pastor Bethel. Subale!